Oh my god, I forgot again. I put you guys. Okay. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'll start with sorry that uh, I forgot. It's late right now. I don't even know how you have one thumbs up with no people, but we started out with a thumbs up. Hey, Ground Pounder, what's up? Yeah, um, I forgot, guys. I'm just being honest. Um, yeah, it didn't even cross my mind. I had so much stuff going on. I had a, I've had an issue with with my little buddy. He's been really sick, and we had to take him in an emergency room. And I thought he was done for for a while. And then uh, dealt with probably the one of these just worst scummiest people I've ever dealt with when it comes to doing trees today. And yesterday, um, yeah, and there's, there's, there's more stuff, there's a ton of stuff, so I'm not going to get into it, though. You guys don't want to hear me whine and moan and groan about all my issues, but what's up, Billy, and what's up, Ground Pounder? So, you're the only two that I see here, I think you're from, Mike, what's up? Um, yeah, I don't really have much, you know, except for I had said in my last video that I would show you guys how to make a retrievable friction saver homemade so I figure I'll show you that um, it needs very little tools and can be done multiple ways but you can make a friction saver but to make a friction saver that's retrievable is the hard part because you don't want to leave it sitting up in a tree you know a lot of times I will uh, I wish I could find something to use as like a supposed tree, you know? Um, let me look around here and see if there's something. Um, no, not really. But we can we can kind of pretend like like this is a tree. You guys got good imaginations, right? Ahi Tundang, what the heck? Billy, I, I can't complain, so, I mean, it wouldn't do me no good if I did. Nobody wants to hear it. So, let's pretend like this is a tree. Now, to me, these are the tickets. Um, if you guys ever want to know how to store these and, like, wrap them like that, I could do a video and show you guys. But that's how I store my speed line straps because if not, they're way down, you know, way down here. Or you got to knot them up and all kinds of stuff. But this is a very, very, very simple way to tie them. And then you take, unclip. You don't have to unclip both. You can just do one. So you would unclip one of those and then just take. And there's no untying. So really... A nice effective little way to uh, store your straps especially like the purple ones are really crazy long so uh, wrapping them like that helps a lot and it stores them keeps them more compact they're not snagging on things so if you guys ever want to see something like that just let me know I'll make a video and and we'll do we'll just do another live video and show you guys on it but uh, and we can maybe we can almost like prep for it if you, know, you go get your straps and we'll sit here and do it together or something Joseph how you doing buddy just get out of the woods Billy says Dan what's up man all right so that's a tree right right so normally when you're up there you would girth it just around and you know that would hang on well let's let's just do so that it's not 
hanging out of the camera view. Let's just pretend like we'll wrap it multiple times. You give us. But the thing about using these and setting it up like this is you're hard pressed. You're not getting your, your strap back when you get down. So you could climb off just that. But that's a very sharp bend radius. So it's probably not the safest thing to climb on. I've done it many times myself. But with a moving rope system, you get the smush there and it becomes a pretty sharp bend radius. So it's not the smartest thing to climb off of if you're doing dual rope. So if, you know, to counter that, you would use a micro pulley. Now, I have this micro pulley, which is probably my favorite. Because if you look at this, so 90% of these micro pulleys would go on. The, um, I guess I could get a little bit of rope out so I can kind of show you this. I got my stuff right here. Yeah, right. I got this little B rope, so we use it. I try to stay caught up on comments too. We're gonna do kind of a shorter live feed, but. We'll do something fun here and then at least I can say that I didn't miss it. See two deer and let them go. Oh, right on you were hunting. Cool. Well, good luck on the next route out. So, um, so you're climbing dual rope. You would go ahead and this will help for the view anyway to show how everything hooks up. Um, so most... Most of the time, you're sitting there and it's like this. You know, it's clipped off of it. But you're climbing on a micro pulley that I don't know usually that's rated for this. Um, probably not good. Some of them are probably okay, but for the most part, I don't know if they're rated. So be cautious of that, first of all. So the bad part is, is that doesn't have a backup. So with this micro pulley, check out how, because it's a double channel like that, you can make this so it has a backup with just a carabiner. By taking it, you take the gear off, you take the loop here that's, that you would clip into, you put that in the middle of this. And then you clip on like this but after you get it through see now you're clipped on you're hang on my hands in the way it's so stupid so you're clipped on you're hooked on there but you can take this now and clip it over and it becomes a backup in case anything was to ever happen you now have a bit of a backup and it becomes super clean looking and your setup's real nice so let's say the micro pulley was to fail for some odd reason. It drops down and now is being caught by a carabiner. This is the only carabiner that I know of that that like that specific like orientation works perfect with. So if you have one of these ISC pulleys, that would be my recommendation if you're going to use it. Having that backup just makes you feel safer. But uh, like I was saying, 90% of the time these micro pulleys, like we'll switch to this other one. This is one from Notch, but the, it comes together up at the top, like you see there. But they open up, you put your, put your rope in there. And this part doesn't work like that because you can't actually, I mean, I guess you could put that inside there, but you would take a chance in it rubbing the rope. So now to take this and you're climbing on it, and you're climbing DRT, you can't, it, it ends up being super incredibly smooth. You get just perfect action. Um, you're able to tend much quicker. Everything works way smoother when you can work off of a pulley when you're in dual rope. So the thing is, when you use this setup, it's now when you come down and you was to retrieve your rope, let's see what's the other end. Okay, you retrieve your rope, you have a sewn eye, so you know it's not, 
Well, that's nice. You now have your rope on the ground, but you've lost a carabiner, a strap, and a microfoil. I have gotten in trees and found things in trees before that climbers have just left. Um, I've been there, but it costs too much money to do that kind of stuff. So let me catch up on comments real quick, and I will show you. Also, I wanted to point out another, a lot, a lot of people have hitch climber pulley. That's another one you could use. So, and with the hitch climber pulley, you could set it up. This is what's nice with it. So check this out. And like I was talking about the backup. So you take the, the hitch climber pulley, you hook it up there in the middle, like that. So those extra holes end up working in your favor because now you could take another carabiner and let's say the rope's going through it there. You could hook here and run the rope through it there. So you now have a backup on it. So it there is ways to make that work. Um, to have the backup but having these tools these few things this is all it takes to make a retrievable friction saver a strap or a rope a micro pulley and a carabiner two carabiners actually because you have to clip one but uh i'll show you that setup and kind of show you how it works but let me catch up on comments really fast and then we'll uh we'll jump into that and I'll show you how it sets up real quick. Turbo's here. What's up, man? Speed lining is very nice to do, Ground Pounder. What's up, buddy? I almost forgot, Turbo. I, I messed up. I'm, we're, we're struggling here to try to get a live feed out so that I can keep up the streak. I I just got on here, so... I have good I climb on like that. It is rated for 30 kilo. Yeah, I think most of them are probably going to be rated and be fine. But it's just weird. It's sketchy. They're so little, and they're called micro pulleys. They should stop calling them that. They should just call them like small pulleys or something. Micro makes me feel like it's going to break. Um, so. Let's go straight into it. That way, whoever watches this video and is trying to get this tip, they don't have to go too far into the video to actually see how to make a retrievable friction saver. So, I got to see if there's something I have to be able to show you how it retrieves. Oh, I do. I probably could have used this earlier, but... Okay, so we got, we got this set up here. And we will pretend like this right here is a crotch up in the tree. You know, this little part here. This was my old, um, check it out, my old phone holder. It's like a drum uh, stand or a music stand for a cymbal or something with a selfie stick duct taped to it. So that's how we was getting it done. But, um, all right, here we go. So... Like I said, you can go get yourself, smack myself in the face with that strap, you can go get yourself a strap. Um, you can buy small toe straps at like uh, most hardware stores, the very small ones, um, those work. That's how the ones that I originally had when I first started was I went with something like that. But then as I kind of started messing around like acquiring tools and stuff, then I moved on to, you know, these kind of straps from Weaver. But, so you have this, you're going to turn this into a retrievable you're, you're gonna turn it into a friction saver or a cambium saver now why would you want a friction saver or a cambium saver it allows you to climb on that pulley and have all that action and all that you know mechanical advantage when it comes to tending and you know descending um ascending it's it's it has many 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 like advantages to it it's real nice. The action that you'll get on all your devices, just, it's, there's no comparison. With all that insane amount of friction, just throwing a rope up through a crotch, you're no longer tearing your ropes up like you were. You're getting a, a much longer life out of them. And then you're getting, it, it's easier on you and your body to be able to tend to do everything. So 
I'm always looking to do that. I'm always looking to make it something easier. So I don't climb DRT a lot, but I realize that it's something that I should touch based on because a lot of people do even though i don't this may help help you know a lot of other guys so i know a lot of guys climb on the zigzag so that's what uh that's kind of where this idea came from like how would a guy with a zigzag be able to make a retrievable friction saver so get up in the tree you're gonna take your strap remember this is our pretend crotch we put it up there now we're we're set up on the crotch now, I want to make sure that we got this in the camera view and that it's lit up. All right, so we're through. We're there. Now, how do you make that retrievable? So, here's how you do it. Like I said, you, I, you want to have two carabiners. Now, you could get up there and climb on just two carabiners. Put one carabiner on this side, put one carabiner on that side, but the problem is it's not retrievable unless, you know, you can find two completely different size carabiners. The way to make something retrievable is to have one side bigger so that a knot that you put in the rope can pass through the big side and catch the small side. That's the way any retrievable system works as far as that goes. Whether you, retrie you choose a retrieval ball or you just use a knot. So this, while you know, works and can get it done, this is not retrievable. So to make this system, this specific system right here, you can make this retrievable with the addition of your micro pulley. And now you get all the mechanical advantages that come from climbing on a pulley as opposed to all that stuff. So how do you do it? It's like this. Now, you're going to run your rope from the big one, okay? This is the way I think of it. When it comes back out, I, I want it to go through the small one first and come into the big one, go into the big one. So through the small one, out the big one. Because in reverse, it will be through the big one, out the small one. So that way it'll catch. So here's the end of our rope. The other end of this little rope has a sewn eye, so you'll know this is the setup. So, micro pulley, you know, I could have set that up with the backup, and it would, actually I'm going to, because it's it's going to make this, this whole system set a little more even, but uh, that's, that's really the only reason I'm setting it up like this. You don't have to set it up like this, you can just clip it on, but uh, I'm going to do it like this. All right, so we take our end of our rope. We're clipped on now. I should probably clean that up so you can kind of see how that works. Yeah, we're hooked on now. We're gonna go into this one. And then through this one. So now, if you notice, we're climbing on a micro pulley and a carabiner. So, we pull it all the way through. This, the way this is set up, this is just working as a backup for the micro pulley because it's hooked up. Let's see if I can separate them now. There's one, there's your other one. You see how big that is? Now you see how small this hole is. Now we can do a knot that'll pass through this one and catch this one and pull it out. So that's the whole thing. It's very, it's such a simple concept. Like, that I know all you guys get it and this this will help out. So now we've made it to the friction shaver. We've climbed. We went down. We made it down. Now we just want to retrieve it. So what I would do, go to the end of my rope. This is the knot that I usually use. It's just a simple stopper knot. All right. Very small. You want it compact because you don't want to have to fight it to go through the first one to get to the second one. But you want it to be big enough it couldn't possibly go through the, the pulley. So we know that this is plenty big enough. So now I'll hold it up here to show you guys. Now we'll just start to retrieve it. 
So what happens is we're getting, now we're getting to the tail. Let's see if I can get that. Here it is. Now watch. It goes through the micropoly. You give it a jiggle. And now you're able to retrieve the whole thing. It stays hooked here. And you pull it through. I'm not going to pull it through because, like I said, this is a selfie stick. And I'm about to break this thing. But let's do that one more time. This pretend crotch. Hooked up. Through the micro pulley, through the carabiner. Now we are set up, we do all of our climbing, we finish up, we're on our way down. Now we go pull pull it out the way that we put it in. Now it's gonna go through that carabiner. Sometimes you gotta give it a wiggle. And then you retrieve it. So that would come up over the crotch and drop down if the crotch wasn't a damn selfie stick and it would fall down. So there is your retrievable friction saver, cambium saver. That's how it looks. That's the setup. Very, very, very simple. Um, not necessary to hook it up like this, but for me, this is the way that works for me. This is the kind of the way I like. It ends up making it much cleaner because what you end up with when you hook it up, let me show you how it looks when you hook it up the other way. It does look a little bit more kind of janky, um, not as even, because you were working on even sides of the strap. Like each side had about, you know, this much on each side after it went over the crotch. So this way, it will end up actually lifting one side and you see it ends up being shorter on this side as opposed to this side but that's okay I mean that's not that's not an issue you're still going to get your rope to go right through there and hook on just like just like you would through the small one into the big one it's hooked up you're climbing it'll even it you know it'll set itself out you'll get it hooked up and it'll start running smooth and then to retrieve it same thing through got it pull it out so very simple setup that anybody can make i'm sure you guys have ways to make this tools to make this you could use maybe a smaller like lock link as long as whatever it is that you have you can make a knot in your rope and get it to pass through what you're using on the first side and catch on the second side that's all that matters so the way i would check it you know i'd be on the ground i'd be like okay so i'm gonna use i'm actually going to use this carabiner and i'm going to use this micro pulley so as i'm looking at it i'm like shoot any kind of knot i tie in that is going to catch this so i know that now i just need to make sure before i head up that this whatever knot i'm going to use can pass through this and I test all that stuff on the ground before I get up in the tree. And, you know, all in all, it's worked out pretty good for me. Um, I, like I said, I don't do a whole lot of, uh, of DRT climbing. But when I do, I like to, uh, to have a very active, like, with good action and an easy setup to use. Because DRT is much harder on your body and uh, can be kind of tough. But... Um, I'm going to show you how to wrap one of these real quick just because we don't have anything else to talk about so here's how it goes take the strap they have a sewn spot on them I usually take that and I flatten it out and then hold it and then you take and you stretch them out you fold it in half okay now you've got it here you even it out you take your two pieces you pull them apart and where you were at the middle you cross it like like this then you take that that one and go over the top like that and then this one over the top like that and then you just keep repeating taking them over the top of each other and I'll show you how this ends up looking when you get done 
Pull this off, pull this off. If I'm not trying to hold it up into the camera, it's much easier and quicker to do. It's actually pretty fast. So then you take, when you get it like this, you take both ends and you put your thumb through and kind of hold them. Then you can take your carabiner and clip it on. Then when you give the, uh, give it a little bump, it actually straightens out real nice. And then you're able to, like I said before, unclip one side give it a shake and now you have your speed line strap and you didn't have to untie a knot and it wasn't catching on everything because it was compact so one more time and then i'm just going to sit here and talk to you guys and read comments so once again flatten it out fold it in half cross it over to do like a a triangle kind of like this and then you just start putting it over the top of each other. So that one will go over the top, like that, and then that one, and then that one, and then you just repeat. You can start crisscrossing them and do it actually pretty quick after you get the hang of it. And it doesn't take you but a couple seconds to wrap your rope up and it looks all nice. I actually got this idea from Traver Ahern. He, uh, he does it with his and I just thought it looked so clean and nice so definitely the credit goes to Trevor not me it's not something I come up with it's something he he may have came up with or somebody he knows but uh it definitely not my ideal but very nice very effective so figured I'd share now you know now you use now we all know so what's up with everybody Let's do some comments and then we will cut this one off and not go too long. So. Oh, okay. You guys haven't been commenting a bunch. Cool. Okay. Right on. I made it. I got a good tip. Fully, I climb on like that is rated for 30 Yeah, actually, let's see what that... The comments, I don't know if they just got... They stopped or what, but I'm not getting any comments through anymore. My phone may be shut off. I don't even know. My phone was on 2% when I had to start this live feed, so... I don't know. So let's see what the kilonewtons is for the rating on this thing. 13 where is the camera I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that where is it at okay 13 actually it says 13 millimeter doesn't it yeah so it's for a 13 <laughs> millimeter rope So, okay. Now, the actual configuration of like running it through the pulley and using it as the pulley onto the sheave there is 18 kilonewtons. And the amount of that can be held by these two little prongs is actually, wow, it's way more. It's You can put 36 kilonewtons of weight on this, but you can only run 18 kilonewtons worth of weight on the actual pulley itself so twice as much up here to hold but won't let you you know have the mechanical advantage so i'll line that up there and you'll be able to see it does the other side say pounds or shows you how much i read my stuff i don't even know so i'll show you that one more time That's it. Um, definitely rated for enough. 18 kilonewtons. I think kilonewton is equivalent to like, was it like a buck 75 or something like that? Like 175 pounds? I think. Or is that wrong? Kilonewton. 170, 170. I don't. I don't know. It's some. I think it's somewhere around there. But definitely don't quote me. 
don't go out like jumping on something being like Mike taught me killing Newtons I didn't teach you nothing don't don't listen to me been hunting ain't got anything yet dang it so I, are you guys still there the comments get shut off I wouldn't doubt that I don't know what's going on here Hmm. I don't know. Let me see what I can do here. Ah, uh, top chat. Some messages such as potential. Uh, all messages are visible. Member and super chat messages. Uh, hide all chat messages. What the heck? Why would you hide all your chat messages? Can I share mute microphone? I, I, I'm not muted, am I? Did I do something here? Because I feel like now I'm just kind of talking to myself and you guys aren't even there. I feel lonely. I'm just kidding though. Don't, don't want anybody take me serious and think I'm really lonely. I think sometimes I forget to tell people I'm joking. So I kept up appearances. I don't know what's going on with this live feed. It's really not like I'm sure you guys are trying to comment. It may be shut off by now. We got four thumbs up. We have had 14, 12 people. I mean, definitely definitely realize that like doing a set live feed at a set time and like giving you guys a heads up is not not really okay so that's mike's mike fights is the best he just messaged me to tell me like answer me <laughs> because he has my number um the last message i have here says been hunting ain't got anything yet from billy i haven't gotten a message since then so are you guys still there but well i mean mike just said you guys can hear me and you can comment so i imagine you guys are commenting i'm just not seeing it. so oh no i don't know what's going on here oh ground powder I bought another high quality tool. I don't know if I ever showed this. New Pro Series. Oh, you see that? Fired up. First pull. It's supposed to detangle. You're supposed to. That's supposed to. Uh, uh. You hear that? That is pretty sweet. Oh my god, it's actually numbered 12 or it's a 125B. Is that an actual Husqvarna blower? I wouldn't know. This, don't listen to Ground Pounder either. He'll tell everybody I love Husky. And I don't really have a problem with Husky Barn. I'm just BSing all the time. I only do it because my moniker is Steelborn. And if I ever would have an option with when it comes to any saws, steel over Husky Barn, I'm going to pick the steel. That's just me personally. That's what's always worked for me. That's where my loyalty lies. So, yeah, that is what it is. But yeah, Husqvarna, if you run Husqvarna, there's nothing wrong with that. They're good saw too. I mean, I'm sure that they make good saws. Oh, also, somebody asked me, dang it, I think it was Kellen O'Donnell. Um, so, Kellen, if you see this, um, yeah, if you see this video, this is the book 
that talks about all the copyright stuff um, that went down. So it touches base on it in like this. I think this is the chapter right here. Um, let's see. See something, say something. Still songs were originally introduced. Here, I'll just read you a little bit of. Oh, I shouldn't do this. I can't read. I think this is the part. Uh, okay, yeah, this is the part. So I'll read you this this part. And don't make fun of me. I'm going to stutter. I'm going to read very slow. And I'm probably going to pronounce things wrong. But we'll blame part of that on my hillbilly twang. And the other part on the lighting in here and my eyes. So that we're all on the same page. Okay, here we go. So this is, I think it's chapter one. Yeah, the the part before this is called the secret sauce. And it does, wow, check out this air compressor. This guy see, that he's like standing on. Or next to. I think it, no, it's not. Oh, wow, that is a tractor. Check that out. You see it? Yeah, that's a steel tractor he's he's standing next to. It looks so awesome. Wow. I wish I had that. Or I guess it could be like a a belly tubber or something like that, but so there's dedications and stuff all in this. That's what that part is. It touches on touches based on everything that comes with steel, like all the stuff that you would definitely wanna wanna know of. So Maybe we, if you guys like this, maybe we do something. No, I don't know. If you like it, I would, but I, I hate reading. So, it says, Steel saws were originally introduced and sold in the United States in the 1930s. A gentleman who later become one of the steel's largest distributors, 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 see what I mean? Sold one of those first steels. During World War II, Steel lost all patent protection in the United States. Sales of steel in the United States ceased, and several American manufacturers immediately copied steel's patents. Nearly two decades passed before the world's leading brand of chainsaw would would, would be reintroduced to the world's biggest market. The notion of writing a book about Steele's reintroduction to the United States and the pioneers who first scored the countryside in search of dealers willing to represent the German-made chainsaw haunted me for nearly a decade. So, like, I guess this dude, this would be a tough thing to do. Like, you're, you're, you're trying to tell the story of, like, why Steele was so dominant and then wasn't dominant so during that decade what did it say there i think it said a decade uh no it says nearly two decades so the war happens it's a german-made company america says you're not selling nothing here all your patents that we're we're holding for you they're they're open anybody can public so Two, two decades go by with, uh, you know, other American manufacturers, uh, manufacturers making this stuff and copying and becoming good and getting a foothold in the market, which, you know, apparently the United States is the biggest market when it comes to the chainsaws anyway. So they had, they had two decades to get clientele, to develop a reputation and, then after that two decades, now you have steel, you know, representatives coming in and they're like having to beg people to sell steel product because it's a German manufactured company. It's like, you know, as Americans, you're so proud and stuff at that time. You're like, no, no, it's German. We don't need it. And at the time, you probably didn't because like they said, all their patents were null and void. It didn't matter no more. They were up for grabs. Everybody, people were making it already. They had already duplicated it. But, and, and I would imagine that during that two decades, they didn't spend a lot of time 
on research and development during a ridiculous world war. Um, so it just gave everybody plenty of time to catch up. And not only did they catch up, they were able to develop a reputation that still couldn't match now. So, um, when speaking to the people about, uh, res oh, when speaking to the people about responsibility, I like to convert the phrase, somebody ought to do something about this sometime, to, I need to do something about this now. Advice is always easier to give than receive. Regrettably, I waited too long to follow my own advice. You should write a book. That's what I tell people when they're relentlessly harp on and on about it. I hate when... Why are they going to do it stupid like it? Subjects that's obviously important to them and pertains to something that they fear few know, but should. Evidently, my repeated comments about the mostly forgotten first slate of steel distributors in America combined with my with me being one of the few people who has been around since steel's reintroduction to the United States and is still associated with steel plus the fact that I have written a few books apparently qualified me as a steel American historian at least by those Urging me to take my own advice. Ugh. The tables had clearly turned. So. I guess he's just basically. There's a guy named Peter Steele. Who's like a big deal. Other than Peter Steele. Yeah. Peter Steele. And then when they say your name in class. You know how they say your first name first. Or your last name first. They're like Steele Peter. So. That's kind of funny, isn't it? I, mean, I got a weak sense of humor, like a 12-year-old. So, I'm not going to read anymore and embarrass myself, but I thought that was interesting. If you guys ever want to see any more of that, or like talk about some of that, we can. But, uh, yeah, I'm tired, guys. I'm worn out. Mentally, I'm just kind of spent. Um, but I didn't want to, you know, disappoint and not not do the weekly live i mean so i'm here i tried i'm about to yeah see my comments are still at billy when he said been hunting ain't got anything yet and then the one above that is hell yeah good tip pulley i climb on like that is rated for 30 kilonewtons from ground pounder so um the guy that wrote the book that apparently talks about himself a lot which is really weird is Stan Crater right here. and uh, exemplary people, extraordinary times. Uh, that be Gwen. See that picture? They spell happy wrong. I don't even know what that second word is, but um, yeah, apparently the. Check out some of this stuff. Let me let me show you. Um, it all began with Andreas Steele, who saw the need to make a hard or to make hard work easier. Legacies are not easily built. They take dedicated individuals who are willing to risk everything, work hard, and be an example of excellence. The electric group of pioneers who laid the foundation for Steele's success in America could not have been more different from each other, but they shared the common drive and character that has proven to test the time. Still American features the amazing stories of these pioneers, including, check this out, a descendant of Daniel Boone's sister, what? Um, who first sold steel saws in America during the 1930s, a Jersey boy who after fighting his way across France and Germany, found himself near the spot where the chainsaws were invented. 20 years later, he secured a one-page contract to sell steel in North America. So apparently, one of the guys is fighting in the war over there. Um, 
of seeing the place and then being the bridge that brought him back, I guess, after the war. A young Native American boy, orphaned during the Osage Reign of Terror, who grew to be an Osage Indian chief and introduced steel to the loggers in the Rockies. An ambunctious Missourian, who, after a stint with the OSS flying B-17 bombers during the World War II, assisted her husband to establish still in the High Plains. And then there's a there's an, an Arkansas lawyer who after losing an eye during a, during the apprehension of a master mur what? Hang on, listen. <laughs> an Arkansas lawyer who after losing an eye during the apprehension of a mass murderer partnered with a timber buyer and introduced steel to America's Southwest. Like, of course you throw in the part of his dying and his eye and we just sold chainsaws. But, uh, then a uh, lefty from Ohio scooted. And I imagine the word lefty didn't mean what the word lefty means now. So, um, a lefty from Ohio, scouted by baseball's legendary Eddie, S Eddie Stanky, Eddie Stanky. That is the coolest name. Steel Peter and Eddie Stanky, um, who chose to introduce steel to New England and rather than play professional baseball. Wow. So he's a left-handed dude who was scouted by Eddie Stanky. And he chose to sell chainsaws instead of play professional baseball. I guess there was no money in it at the time. The husband of a former Miss New Hampshire who had the entire United States as his sales territory and became the first man of steel in America. A piano player. And there's the last two. A piano player from a tiny town in Missouri who becomes steel's largest independent distributor. That's pretty sweet. Um, and then a Canadian-born scoutsman who started as a low-level steel employee and eventually rose to the position of president, leading the company to decades of record-setting sales. This is the exemplary heritage of steel in America. So, I should have maybe two people watching. I should have ran you all off by reading. Um... Yeah, guys, thanks for hanging out. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death. But uh, we did keep up appearances. If you've said anything in like the past 30 minutes or more, I haven't seen it. It, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, I'll tell Okay, no, that's not right. I don't know what's wrong with it. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you hanging out. Um, maybe we'll do a different live feed to try to make up for this one being so short. It's 50 minutes. not really that short. But, uh, hope you got something out of the little bit of information um, that I showed you. And maybe you found that entertaining or interesting. If not, just thanks for hanging out. Give me your time. I'll catch you guys soon. Stay safe. And uh, thanks for hanging out.